but after listening to this, I kind of want to talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that I so much want to start a school. And I was thinking that perhaps I, I actually need to talk about that school. Or I could talk about some things that I strongly believe in, and then you can start the school, any of you. Let's see. So I'm going to talk about co-creation, collaboration, how to work together, and why that is something that you all need to do to be more competitive while developing services. Because mostly of you, most people here in the room are going to work with service innovation or service development. Because 80% of our businesses do that today in Sweden. So I was thinking of this. Last Thursday, I was really, really surprised. Because my company was awarded the titanium, it's called the titanium egg, okay? The titanium award, something that the Swedish Advertising Association gives to uh, a company that's done something revolutionary for society, that changed behaviors for lots and lots of people. Did I do that? Did my company do that? Did we develop SVT Play? No. Because we were working with the people who are going to use this service and together with them, the people who are happy frustrated, the people who has a lot of expectations of watching TV in new ways, how should that be? We've been working together with them to create this service. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. How do we do that? How do we take care of, of all that creativity that you all are kind of, what was it saying? It's lost for you. You had it, but now it's lost. And my business is based on how can we get the most out of you or the talents that we're working with. And that's based on culture. It's my main belief that innovation True innovation is based on culture. So first I'm going to talk about how are we doing things at my company. And I'm going to stand here for a bit also so that I can see this watch. Building a company where we can innovate together starts with trust. So it starts with how can I create a culture where you trust me so much so that you dare to jump, so that you dare to do all the mistakes. How can I do that? Is it like, am I going to tell you, trust me, give me your ideas, just try things, trust me, trust me, trust me? No, that doesn't work like that. It starts with another thing. It starts with openness. It starts with openness that creates the relationships where we trust each other. So our culture is based on openness and we need to invest in this. So this picture here, this is Halma. And this is from an event that we have three times a year where we invest in our culture. So Herman here is talking about what's been some really, really good things 
the last couple of months? What's been some really, really bad things the last couple of months? And by doing so, he's telling all his colleagues <coughs> what's been going on for him. He's opening up. He's talking about himself. And when he's doing that, it's very, very likely that his colleagues is going to open up themselves and say, I trust you. So now I'm going to reveal something about myself, which encourages Harman to reveal even something more. And we've started the trust journey. So openness is the key to building deeper relationships. And we need those deeper relationships to do more complex things. The more complex things you're going to create, the more you need to trust each other, the deeper the relationships needs to be. But it's also about how open is our company to the people who work here. And that openness, is, you know, that could be uh, a value that all companies in the world are talking about. Yes, we are very open. We open the books for everyone. Yes, that's easy. Piece of cake. But real openness when it comes to driving a company, for me, is actually to do it in a way so that everyone has the same opportunities to participate. So this is the way that we do budgeting at Doberman. I'm not just opening the books or the Excel sheets for everyone to work together with me. Because you know what happens? 75% are bored, and the others are just creating a wish list. But I created our budget in Lego. So what you can see over here is just that I divided all the important pieces or accounts into different colors, and I've asked everyone to contribute <coughs> to our strategy for the next year. And everyone are enjoyed. <coughs> they feel that they can participate, but it all, they also understand that everything needs to fit together. So they cannot just ask for things. They also need to show me in their go how they're going to finance it. And this works. I've done it for seven years. And some very, very interesting things come from this. For example, 2007, we were going to move to a new office. And uh, from the Lego budget, people said, I rather have a nicer office than a higher salary next year. Do you think that I could have said that to them? Do you think that I could you know, have a Monday meeting say, okay, next year, you're not going to have a, a raise in your salary, you're just going to have a nicer office? No. But by having them included in the process, they understood that they needed to choose. And they chose the office, where they here are actually trying to create some new spaces in our office together. So I would say that a truly uh, participative approach to how we are driving our company is a key to create some great services. Another, another thing I think is very important is that we uh, inspire people to come up with their ideas. So this is a picture where I try to symbolize how we do... Uh, <coughs> We have something that we call plus menu at Doberman, and that's invented by someone working in our team. So uh, he said, I don't think that people always want to have money as, uh, you know, to show them how good they are. Some people want to have more time. Some people want to have uh, education. So we did the plus menu. Okay, you have your, you know, Big Mac and Company, so you have your salary and your pension and your vacation six weeks and all that. But each year when you're going to negotiate of a higher salary, you negotiate about plus. So a plus could be one extra uh, day of vacation or it could be higher salary or something like that. Again, people can choose what they want to have. And they could, we have some tools for them to participate in how we do this. This also goes for our clients.
Satan. How can I tell my clients to trust me? And trust that the journey that we are going to jump on, I cannot even tell you how it's going to be. I could tell you the first couple of meetings, but then what will happen? You just need to trust us. That's difficult. And I think that we've developed a couple of methods how to do so. So for example, what I talk about with my clients is that to be able to create something for them that is as innovative as Swedish television wants it to be, or Apotheket, or Posten, old companies want to be more innovative, okay? We first need to feel. We first need to understand who are we doing this for. And here's where we get the energy to the project. Here's when we feel who are the users for this project. For example, this is when we're out in the woods with a project called Urban Nation. No? Urban Exploration. No, what's it called? Urban Nature. Urban Nature, it's called. How can we get parents out in the woods more? Well, we need to go out in the woods with the parents to understand their needs, to understand what are the wishes, what, what are driving them out in the woods to see, is there a service that could help them, inspire them to do this even more? So that's one tool. That's one way of working with our clients. Another way is very hands-on. You know what? As I said before, we were not the designers of SVT Play. We did it all together with the Swedish television and their customers or consumers. So here's a picture from a flight uh, where I think what's important here is we designed together. So what we do is we actually remove all our roads. And we work together. What we tell everyone is that everyone in this room are equally important in all decision making. And when we do something like this, we bring the official decision maker in the room, but we also bring perhaps a, a technologist or a strategist or a designer or whatever competence and we say, based on the empathy that we just had and based on all the research and the insights that we have, we strongly believe that we can all design together. So instead of, instead of talking about multidisciplinary teams, perhaps it's intradisciplinary teams. And the third thing that I wanted to say about this, how we co-create together with all the people who are going to use the service or be behind the service, are also that we need to prototype, basically. <laughs> and that's something that a lot of people are talking about, but I so much strongly believe that we need to do it. We need to try, and we need to do, instead of writing PowerPoint documents. I mean, just remove them and start creating instead. Together. So here's an example where we were going to uh, do a new concept store for Telia, where they would like to have all these different screens on the walls and everything. And it was so cool designed, but no one thought about how ends consumer going to perceive this. <coughs> so what we did was we asked the carpenter, could you come to our office and build the prototype and let's bring the users in and let's start working. And we learned so much. We learned so much. For example, having a screen is not that cool anymore. And people still want to touch the phone that they're going to buy. So we cannot remove the phones from the store. But we need to integrate them so that the phones and the screens and what they are going to do collaborate. And that's what we're actually 
Uh, you cannot see that, but that's what we're exploring with this feature. Collaboration. But we, from this, we also got some really strong ambassadors because people have been there watching the users using the prototypes and they could then tell their bosses, I know how it works because I've been there and we need to do this and that to be able to great, do a great experience or whatever we're going to do. So my message is of course not that we're here to win any awards. Or, I mean, I'm thinking I'm not even that proud of how this looks. Or perhaps not even how it works. Because my message is that true service innovation happens when you're using it. It doesn't exist even before the usage is there. And to be able to do so, and to be able to create this, we just need to do it together. Thank you.